Good evening and welcome to MTV's News Update, March 25, 2020 edition. I'm Sandy Ramutar. For the top stories we're tracking this evening, GCAM says hands are tied from making official elections declaration due to court battle. There are no new confirmed cases of coronavirus in Ghana. Economy says 2020 will be a challenging year to Ghana's economy. PPP urged ballot box watchers to reduce their number to 25. Health Ministry claims it has adequate coronavirus test kits. And in sport, local boxes in Cuba are well and awaiting return home. Now for the news in detail. The Ghana Elections Commission said its hands are tied from making a decision that will ensure the election process ends within the shortest possible time because it has been restrained by an injunction that is up for a judicial review in the High Court. The Ghana Elections Commission has indicated that it intends to await the decision of the High Court before taking further actions. The Commission in a statement said that the matter is sub judice and it will await the outcome of the legal proceedings before further deliberations. The electoral body reminded that it is an autonomous constitutional agency that is guided by a legal framework and it is imperative that it abides by the decision of the High Court. The Elections Commission has been restrained by an injunction blocking it from proceeding with the national recount, which was supposed to be supervised by a team from the Caribbean community. The matter is before Justice Franklin Holder and is up for judicial review on Friday. Elections in Ghana were held in March 2, 2020. Politicians were satisfied with the declaration of the nine regions, but all parties, with the exception of the APNU AFC coalition, objected to the manner in which the returning officer of Region 4 tabulated the votes. They claim the numbers he declared are inaccurate as they were not taken from the statements of polls. International and local observers share the same view. This has led to the current legal battle. The Ministry of Public Health has updated that it has more than five cases of persons placed under mandatory quarantine as part of the protocol to stop help stop the spread of the coronavirus. The Ministry of Public Health has ordered the mandatory quarantine of nine persons and isolation of four others. They remain under close surveillance. Minister of Public Health Volda Lawrence today explained that measures have been put in place to ensure psychosocial support is rendered to those persons in quarantine and isolation. At one point, we did have seven persons who were of interest to us, and to date, we have been able to eliminate six of those persons. With regard to the number of persons receiving psychosocial support services, let me just say that all persons quarantined and in isolation will be receiving psychosocial support from our mental health unit at the Ministry of Public Health, who is working along with the Ministry of Social Protection. The ministry received 533 calls to its hotline, with 90% of those coming from Region 4, Lawrence said. According to Lawrence, the Health Emergency Operations Center continues to conduct meetings every 48 hours for updates in an effort to monitor the COVID-19 situation. Lawrence noted that the ministry has an adequate supply of testing kits and other important medical elements for medical staff. The ministry has also been able to deliver information of the coronavirus to Amerindians that are not familiar with English. We have been able to translate our messages in four indigenous dialects. Those are Wapichan, Makushi, Akawayo, and Patamona. We are currently working on the messages for persons living with disabilities. And through some of our international partners, we are working on translations into languages for our migrant population. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. A barber and father of one is now dead after he lost control of a pickup and drove into a trench earlier today. According to police, 36-year-old Gansham Ravi Haria of Canal No. 1 West Bank Demerara was proceeding south in Pumpkin Dam Canal No. 1 at about 6 hours when he approached a wooden bridge and lost control of the pickup he was driving. Reports are that the vehicle turned a turtle inside the trench, pinning Haria underneath. 
He was taken out by public-spirited citizens and rushed to the West Demora Regional Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. According to the now deceased man's wife, Haria, who would assist the farmer in taking workers into the bath dam every day, and it was on his way back home when the accident occurred. More coming up after the break. Stay with us. At Decor and Gift Gallery, we have comfortable and unique living room suites. Check out your bonded leather sofa or three-piece recliner set and much more. Or pick a lovely dining room set to match your home setting. Whatever is your style, we've got it. Shop your living room or dining room sets at Decor and Gift Gallery today. In keeping with our reputation for providing quality products, services and solutions, we're pleased to introduce to you our newest line of solar energy products by Victron Energy, provided by Farfan and Mendez Limited. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Be Sun Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Be Sun Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Welcome back, you're still with MTV's News Update. Financial analyst Says Narayan Singh has predicted that year 2020 will be a poor year for Ghana's economy as a result of the current political situation and the coronavirus pandemic. Financial analyst Says Narayan Singh is certain that 2020 will be a challenging year for economic growth in Guyana. His forecast comes from the stalled declaration of a winner of the elections and a novel coronavirus pandemic. Elections were held on March 2, 2020, without a winner announced by GCOM to date. So it's, it's, it's a, like a lock is happening and the, and the bad news is coming from all directions. Now, um, that is why it's extremely important we we take action on resolving our political situation giving clear guidance to the people on how we're going to battle this health crisis and collaborate and this is the time we got to really dig deep as a people collaborate with each other to navigate this this trying period some local businesses were forced to close out of fear of the disease this resulted in a temporary suspension of employees 
Singh, who is based in Wall Street, New York, said the contracting of the private sector will plunge the economy into a negative growth rate. And if you have negative growth or shrinking of aggregate demand, it means that the economy will shrink. Um, and I'm convinced that by the end of 2020, um, this economy will perform poorly or even shrink. The People's Progressive Party is urging the ballot box watchers to decrease their numbers to 25 in keeping with the World Health Organization's protective measure to combat COVID-19. The persons are guarding the boxes to ensure there is no tampering with the ballots. Persons in large numbers have been guarding the containers that hold the ballot boxes from being tampered. The guard is currently ongoing at Jicom's High and Cowan Street's Kingston office. However, due to the threat of COVID-19, the People's Progressive Party has urged the guardians of democracy to safeguard themselves against the virus. In keeping with the World Health Organization protective measures to combat the coronavirus, inclusive of social distancing, the party is suggesting that there should be no more than 25 persons present at the location where the ballot boxes are being housed. The PPPC is also encouraging persons who want to be part of the ballot box guard to register at the Freedom House headquarters so that a schedule will be drafted. The first detection of the virus came following the mysterious death of a woman at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Since then, businesses have closed their doors. Schools, including the University of Guyana, have been shut. Luan Williams reporting for MTV News Update. The Child Care and Protection Agency has noted its work continues regardless of the threat of COVID-19. However, persons should report cases to the CCNPA over the telephone. Director of the Child Care and Protection Agency, Anne Green, have assured that the care for vulnerable children is priority. So in the face of the threat of the coronavirus, the work of the agency will continue. Green explained, though there has been a decline in the number of persons coming to the agency to make reports, measures have been put in place that cater to reports being made via telephone. Green reiterates staff of the agency are taking the necessary measures to ensure their safety and the safety of others as they continue to work for the benefit of children and their families. People come here, but we have set up systems here. We got hand washing at the gate and so on. So some are still coming here. Well, the traffic to the agency, I mean, they walk in. Mm -hmm. That has declined somewhat. Well, we still have our calls on the hotline and so on. Staff is still um, working. We're still responding. We're using the precautionary um, measures. Gray noted that staff, when out in the field, has also been advised to practice social distancing, which is said to play a critical role in the prevention of the spread of the coronavirus. Yeah, well, we we working, we maintaining the social distance, and we are giving staff as uh, as today gloves and um, face masks if they have to go into the district to to a home to remove a child or so on. We taking that that kind of precaution at this time when um, you know families are practicing social distance and to stay at home and so on. So um, be hoping that the children will be properly looked after and cared for. And we're still encouraging persons that they can call our number anytime if they need any guidance and any advice or any situation that they encounter and they need some help with. We, our offices are still open. Our numbers are available. Call us and we'll see how we're able to, to help. Reporting from TV News Update, LaShawn Gomes, Cornelius. The Interreligious Organization of Ghana is calling on all religious leaders and stakeholders to practice social distancing for the next seven weeks as a result of the novel coronavirus. Ghana has confirmed four cases with one death. The religious body said the coronavirus pandemic should be given careful consideration because persons who are diagnosed with non-communicable diseases are very much at risk. Said ahead, sugar production likely to flatter due to monetary rotation system at estates and the city hall sanitizes border market environments. Are you running around looking for construction materials? Well, run down to Lens for affordable, high-quality building supplies. 
We have the widest range of grade A floor and wall tiles in any shape, size and designs. And all types of ceramics, porcelain glazed and full body porcelain. We stock the largest collection of large format tiles. Check out our porcelain slabs as big as 10 feet by 4.5 feet. Add a bit of elegance with our large range of decorative molding. Our line of PPG paints will give you vibrant colors that won't fade. With our wall and ceiling gypsum system, it's light, durable and fast. So come down to Lens at 136 Cherry Street, which is next to Buddy's and Pizza Hut for that 31 years of Lens quality. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Seabun's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. 80% of the population around the world have a stomachal problem because the water is contaminated. Some of these stomachal problems are diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, filaria, avoid this sickness with the latest water purifier. Drink clean, fresh mineral water at all the time. Just put water from the pipe, the river or rainwater at the top of the water purifier and the system is going to remove all the impurities. Easy to use, easy to sample, no current, no batteries. Purify more than 10,000 liters of water. Beautify your home or office building with high-quality aluminium and glass products from Gafours. Our products are made with high-quality aluminium that is thicker, broader, and more durable than that of our competitors. Available with 3mm to 6mm glass, our line of products includes sash windows, casement windows, awning windows, sliding windows, arch windows, fixed windows, and PVC sash windows that are corrosion-free. Swing entrance doors and sliding glass doors, available with tinted or tempered glass. Showcases, custom built to any size and design. Bathroom enclosures made from frosted and designed acrylic with gold, silver and white trim. Achieve that modern look for your commercial buildings with quality shop fronts and curtain walls. With 6mm, not 4mm glass, manufactured and installed by our trained and experienced staff. Now available, etched designed mirrors and glass, available for awards or promotional events. Custom made to any size with decorative trim or polished edges. Remember, for quality products at competitive prices, it's Gaffour's, the name you can trust. Welcome back, you're tuned to MTV's News Update. Ghana's sugar production is expected to decline further as the number of employees at the states is being reduced and a shift system implemented. This is to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. The Guyana Sugar Corporation, in collaboration with the Guyana Agricultural and the General Workers Union, the National Association of Agricultural, Commercial and Industrial Employees, and the Guyana Labor Union, have agreed that a shift the system will be employed at the sugar estates. This is to prevent the widespread of the coronavirus that causes the disease COVID-19. It was mutually agreed that large gathering of employees at various locations must be minimized. This could further compound the situation as it relates to sugar production. Last year, sugar production reached an all-time low in 20 years. Meanwhile, Gaisuku will be sanitizing labor transportation, workstations, and the machinery between shifts. Guyana has recorded five cases of the coronavirus, resulting in one death. The virus, which was first documented in Wuhan, China, has spread across the globe, 
killing over 18,000 persons to date. It is unclear how the virus originated, but scientists believe it may have been transferred to humans from either a bat or a pangolin. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Georgetown Municipality, in collaboration with the Ghana Fire Service, has begun sanitization of public spaces as safety measure to combat the coronavirus. The exercise began at four hours this morning. With directions given by the director of the Solid Waste Management, Walter Narain, the firemen washed the street around Border Market, where a lot of citizens frequently purchase groceries. Sanitizing heavily populated areas is very important, as research has shown that COVID-19 stays on plastic items for three days and asphalt roads for a day, Director of the Solid Waste Management Dr. Walter Narain had noted in a recent press conference. As such, all areas that are populated during the day will be targeted. This exercise is aimed at helping reduce the spread of the novel coronavirus. Cleaning is done with water mixed with detergents and disinfectants. Guyana has recorded five cases of the novel coronavirus with one death. Globally, there has been more than 18,000 deaths. Luan Williams reporting for MTV News Update. We tell you now that the Starbuck market will be closed to the public on Thursday, March 26, 2020. This is to facilitate the spraying and sanitization of the market and its immediate environs by the City Public Health Department. Stallholders and vendors will not be permitted to operate for the entire day. The Ghana Post Office Corporation is encouraging pensioners to authorize family members to uplift their pensions, as scientists have found that the virus is more devastating on the elderly. In a statement to the press, the Ghana Post Office is encouraging pensioners to refrain from visiting the post offices during the first two days of the month. The post office will be accepting authorized family members to uplift their pension payment. This is due to the virus having a virtually deadly effect on the elderly due to their weakened immune system. In keeping with the guidelines provided by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHU, the Ghana Post Office Corporation will take precautions, such as maintaining a three feet distance between individuals in the line. Persons visiting the office will be asked to wash their hands upon entry. Face masks will be provided for persons with coughs and public areas in the office will be sanitized throughout the day. Pensioners usually form long queues on the first day of their month at post offices across the country to collect their different pensions. Luan Williams reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Stay tuned. Welcome to Rossignol's Butchery. Here you'll find the freshest, most tender and flavorful meats, including steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and more, plus packaged meats and cheeses. All this in a highly hygienic atmosphere. In our store, there is a wide variety of canned goods, sauces, and marinades. Our friendly staff will cater to all your needs. Rossignol Butchery. We meet your needs. 7374 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone 223-0004. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermites free and water resistant. Enjoy one year factory warranty along with our after sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Start feeling good again with Probiotic XL. Probiotic XL contains a proprietary formula of 10 of the most important probiotics that have been researched and developed to help your body get rid of what's bad for it and help promote what makes you feel good. If leading a healthy life and enjoying every day is something you want to do, then Probiotic XL is for you.
now using Softex toilet tissue. Available in leading supermarkets countrywide, Softex is always silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp and babies love it. Softex comes available in single rolls, economy pack, six pack, and one dozen packages. Just perfect for any budget. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, telephone 622-4197. Hey, you have a growing flesh there? And there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague. Ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. It stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at the Slim Jet, City Mall, second floor. Welcome back. Now for some regional news taken from the BBC. The story of the first person to die of the coronavirus in Rio de Janeiro has fueled this fear. Just a few days ago, the investigative journalism website Publica reported that a 63-year-old housekeeper's employer had gone to Italy and came back with symptoms and didn't tell her housekeeper she was ill. Fast forward a month and the housekeeper is dead. The speed of transmission is something that worries medics here who fear the public health system will not be able to cope. The social class who is ill at the moment is the upper middle class and the upper classes and that's why we haven't yet seen a substance transmission rate, says Dr. Bethrys Barondi, who heads the Disaster and Emergency Committee at Sao Paulo's Hospital da Silencia, the largest public hospital in Latin America. Once they start spreading the virus to the middle and lower classes, that's when we are going to have the issues with quarantine. With lots of people living in the same room, that could cause you transmission problems, he said. It has already started. There are now cases in Rio's shanty towns known as favelas. Hospital Das Clinicas is preparing, opening up an entire floor to receive critical patients. In the next week or so, it is expecting half of the ward to be full, and in less than a month, that every bed will be occupied. It's community transmission that reveals the deep inequities in the region, poorer people serving wealthier ones. Cooks, housekeepers and nannies will have to rely on a public health service that is already oversubscribed and that's without the onslaught of coronavirus. And while decent employees will continue to pay their staff regardless of whether they will work or not, not everyone has been decent. On international scene, more than 4,000 prisoners will be released in Ethiopia as the government continues to take measures to control the spread of the coronavirus. The country's attorney general said on Wednesday that prisoners convicted of minor offenses and women with babies were among those who will be freed. Foreigners charged with involvement with smuggling and drug trafficking will also be released and deported to their countries of origin. Among those to be released is journalist Fikadu Mahantmark. The magazine editor returned to Ethiopia after Prime Minister Ahmed Abiy came to power in 2018 at a time when thousands of political prisoners were freed, a state of emergency ended, and numerous political parties on banned. But the changes of tax evasion he faced in absentia were not dropped and he was sentenced to seven years in jail last October. Meanwhile, a man in Rwanda who breached the ongoing lockdown to reportedly go fishing has been killed and eaten by a crocodile. The mayor of the southern Kamoi district has told the BBC. Alice Kaitesi said the Wednesday morning incident happened in the Naiborango River. The authorities in Rwanda imposed a total lockdown on Sunday as cases of COVID-19 continue to rise. The East African nation has confirmed 40 cases so far, the highest in the region. The shutdown of economic activities in the country has severely affected the majority of people who are low-income earners. The government said that it would help those struggling amidst the strict measures. In another development, a local news website reported on Monday that police shot dead two men in the southern district of Nyanza after an altercation about the lockdown. The police have, however, not confirmed the incident. Let's now join Sitting Griffith for MTV's Court Roundup.
Another person has been charged for the murder of Rosignol businessman Tony Bisnot, who was shot and killed two weeks ago. On Friday last, 21-year-old Sheldon Smith, a mason of underneaming West Bank de Marara, appeared at the Fort Wellington Magistrate's Court before Magistrate Rabindranath Singh and was not required to plead to the charge which read that on March 13, he murdered Tony Bisnot. He was remanded to prison until April 21. Reports indicate that Bisnot was celebrating his birthday with close relatives and friends outside his snacket when three men who were armed with guns and a cutlass pounced on them and demanded cash and valuables. According to the now deceased man's wife, Sunita Kanai, her husband did not comply with the bandits and was shot to the head. Police have also issued wanted bulletins for two other men, Madeline Orlando Evans and Carlos Evans, in connection with the murder of Bisnot. Meanwhile, a repeat offender found himself back in court this morning charged with several counts of armed robbery. 25-year-old Osafo Denhart of Nordrum Veld, George Hong was not required to plead to the three charges against him as he appeared before Magistrate Charles Isaacs Marcus at the George Hong Magistrate's Court. The first charge stated that on March 21 at Jamun Drive, Meadowbrook, Georgetown, while being in the company of others and armed with a gun, he robbed Lawrence McKay of a 25-pennyweight gold chain valued $400,000, one ring valued $150,000, and one diamond bracelet valued $375,000. A second charge read that on the same date and location while being armed with a gun, he robbed Sharwin LaFleur of a phone valued $26,000. The last charge stated that on the same day and at the same location while being armed with a gun, he robbed Ulrich Edwards of a phone valued $26,000. The prosecution objected to bail based on the fact that the firearm was used during the robberies and highlighted the fact that Den Hart was convicted for a similar offense in 2014 and spent 24 months in jail. As such, bail was denied and Osafo Den Hart was remanded to prison. He will reappear in court on April 22. Finally, a man was today hauled before Magistrate Charles Isaacs Marcus to answer for having an illegal firearm. 48-year-old Kent Isaacs pleaded not guilty to the charge against him, which alleged that on March 22 at Garnet Street, Georgetown, he had a 9mm pistol without being the holder of a firearm license at the time. According to reports, Isaacs was observed by police throwing an object over a fence. Once recovered, it was discovered to be a firearm. The defendant in addressing the court, however, told the magistrate that he was on his way home in an intoxicated state when he was stopped and searched by the police. The man denied having the firearm and alleged that he was also beaten by the officers before being arrested. Police prosecutor Delon Sullivan objected to bail citing the seriousness of the offence, as well as the fact that the defendant poses a flight risk. As such, bail was refused and Kent Isaacs was remanded to prison until April 22. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Cillian Griffith. <laughs>
British Paralympians, including Hannah Cockcroft and Kadima Cox, said the postponement of Tokyo 2020 is disappointing, but the right thing. The Paralympics and the Olympics were called off yesterday because of the worldwide coronavirus pandemic and are now expected to take place in 2021. Cox said this is the best decision as health comes before everything. Meanwhile, International Paralympic Committee President Andrew Parsons said the health and well-being of human life must always be our number one priority in staging a sport event of any kind during this pandemic is simply not possible. Over the last week, the many British athletes hoping to compete at the Tokyo Paralympics were seeing their training centers close because of the impact of the virus, with others self-isolating or in virtual lockdown because of complex health conditions. British Paralympic Association Chief Executive Mike Sharrock said they were already implementing contingency plans to ensure British athletes had everything in place to be best prepared for the Games in 2021. The Ghana Olympic Association believes the International Olympic Committee's decision to postpone the 2020 Tokyo Olympics is in the best interest of athletes. President of the GOA, K. A. Juman Yassin, in a statement informed other members of the executive of Panam Sports all agreed with the IOC's decision via video conference call. The statement said the question that will have to be determined regards the position of the already qualified athletes. The GOA believes it would be unfair to ask the 57% of already qualified athletes for a requalification. The GOA said there are several issues that the IOC and Panam Sports will have to determine and these will be dealt with as the time goes by. Nonetheless, they will be looking at all relevant issues and will endeavor to do what is best for their athletes. Meanwhile, President of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Batch, said the cost of postponing Tokyo 2020 was not discussed with Japan's Prime Minister. Earlier this month, Batch said postponing would come at a cost. Batch said rescheduling the Games is like, and I quote, a huge jigsaw puzzle, end of quote. He added the new date will not be restricted to the summer months. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sport Update. Bayern and Monrit's players and directors have agreed to take a temporary 20% pay cut. The German giants have said the move was to help the other employees at the club financially during this current coronavirus crisis. Last week, Borussia Mönchengladbach's players were the first in the country to order to forego wages. Borussia Dortmund players are also in talks to take a wage cut. There has been no Bundesliga action since March 8 as the coronavirus outbreak hit sport across the world. Early today, German authorities announced there had been 31,554 cases of coronavirus in the country and 149 deaths. Barbados Bride had been declared winners of the 2019-2020 West Indies Regional 40 Championship, throning five-time defending champions, the Ghana Jaguars. This is according to Cricket West Indies, following a virtual meeting with their board of directors. With pride top of the points table after the eighth round of the championship, the board unanimously agreed to award the team. Former champions, the Guyana Jaguars, slumped to third position with 91.8 points behind the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force on 94.6 points. Acting upon advice of the Cricket West Indies Medical Advisory Committee, a decision was made to cancel the last two rounds of matches due to the coronavirus pandemic. CEO of CWI, Johnny Grave, confirmed cricket, cricketers and all stakeholders involved in the game have been affected at various levels. Ten days ago, tournaments and camps were suspended for 30 days. However, that suspension has been extended until the end of May. Graves said the health and safety of everyone concerned is paramount, noting all systems are in place to observe the protocols outlined by the Medical Advisory Committee and the World Health Organization. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sport Update. The organizer of the Canadian Grand Prix says they are about three weeks before a decision has to be made whether to postpone the race. The event on June 14 is the first of the original schedule not yet postponed in the wake of the coronavirus crisis. Canadian GP promoter Francisco Domother said they would have to make a decision by the Easter weekend in April. He added if the situation improves by then, they could have the site ready on schedule. The race in Montreal is held on a semi-permanent street circuit on a Le Notre Dame in St. Lawrence. Way. This makes the task of appearing the track easier than at the two races that preceded it on the calendar Monaco and Azerbaijan. The Dominant Tour said that if this race could not be held on its original date, it would not be cancelled but slotted into the revised calendar being planned by F1.
More news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall. ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back to your Silver Time TV's news update. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge and the Barbies River Bridge schedules. This is where we wrap up this evening's broadcast, but before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Chicom says hands are tied from making official elections declaration due to court battle. There are no new cases of coronavirus in Ghana. Economist says 2020 will be a challenging year to Ghana's economy. PPP urged ballot box watchers to reduce their number to 25. Health Ministry claims it has adequate coronavirus test kits. And in sport, local boxes in Cuba are well and awaiting return home. Catch our river cast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. Remember to keep your surroundings tidy, wash hands frequently, and avoid touching your face to prevent contraction of the coronavirus. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Have a good night.